Hello and welcome to another episode of Gotham Sound TV. I am very excited to be here with Glenn Sanders of ZaxCon. Uh, we're going to talk about Nova 2.0. And in fact, we're not just going to talk about it. We are going to demonstrate it on tape um, because one of its huge features is Automix. Tape. On <laughs> file. Thank you. And one of its huge features, I'm old. I can say tape. It's a good thing I didn't say film. One of its huge features is auto mix, and uh, so the the audio that you are hearing is actually from this recorder being auto mixed, um, and we'll make available uh, the isolated files as well. Um, but yeah, welcome. Well, thank you, Peter. It's great to be here. Great to as have always. You. So uh, updates for 2.0, uh, 16 tracks, auto mixing. Yes. And um, Oasis. Oasis compatibility. Oasis compatibility. Which is, which is going to be a huge setup, I think, for, for a lot yeah, of Yeah, and there will be other, other products, other mixers coming along as well. So, mm -hmm. so let's go to the overhead and we'll, uh, we'll get started. Uh, I'm on track three, and you can see this blue bouncing ball that's on the display. That's showing you the auto mixer and the fact that it's opening my channel and when so I speak. if I talk, there's my blue ball. Right, so you're on track four, Peter. One, two, hey. yeah. That's and off good. camera, we have Joe on track five. Check, one, two, hello, check. There you go. So we can all talk together if we would like. How are you doing, Peter? I'm all right. You're good? Yeah, this I is love, good. Yeah, I love okay. Doing these videos. Joe? Yes. Joe, how are you? I'm fantastic. Right. So basically, the blue ball shows you the prominent channel, and you could see these smaller bouncing yellow symbols that are. Uh, that are on the track. So what it's showing me is what it's doing to the noise floor on those other channels. So when I speak, the other channels actually push down so that the noise floor can be constant. And yet it's doing a wonderful job at mixing multiple channels together. So if I'm quiet for a second, you can hear the noise of the room. What I'd like to do is show you that we've actually done something very, very special in this auto mixer. If I go to the auto mixer setup menu, mm -hmm. uh, what we have in here is attack and decay, which are values for the auto mixer that are pretty much preset. But if you feel you want to tweak them, you can do it. Uh, this will give you a definite, uh, you know, different, definite difference, and you know you can adjust that to your taste. But we added to the auto mixer something that really makes a difference. We integrated a noise reducer onto every channel. So the noise reducer is kind of like a downward expander. And right now I have 6 dB of noise reduction put in there. Uh, we have a threshold of noise reduction where it's going to start acting. But I want you to hear what the noise reducer does. So I'm going to keep quiet and I'm going to basically go in and right now, this is kicked in. We, the auto mixer set up, the noise reduction is in. I'm going to turn the noise reduction off. So that's noise reduction off, and that's the auto mixer on. So basically, auto mixer in, auto mixer out. So it's really two things going on. One is the functioning of the auto mix. Uh, and the other is this downward expander that's operating independently of the auto mix. Right. It is, well, it's somewhat not it's independent. It's only, it's, the downward expander is only incorporated into the auto mixer. Mm -hmm. So your ISO tracks are going to be ISO track without that. So, you know, they're going to be clean ISO tracks. And the auto mixer has its ability to make its own auto mix track. So you can let the auto mixer go, it'll function independently, and you can also do a manual mix to another track at the same time. So it doesn't use up a bus, it, it doesn't use up a track. You can, you can mix to your heart's content, but in uh, always working you have this separate track. Right. When we say it doesn't use a track, you can record it on a separate track. You can route it simply to an output mm -hmm. if you'd like to do that. It's very flexible and versatile hmm. in what it'll do. But it's very natural sounding. And I think, you know, again, the goal here was not only to produce an auto mixer, but to integrate something into it and work with it to the point where I felt that we really had something that was incredibly 
unique and flexible. And is there a limit to how many inputs it can work on? No, it'll work on all 18 inputs simultaneously. Hmm. Yeah, and we actually are working to integrate that into our control surfaces to give you better control of the auto mixer. Uh, part of what we've done here in version 2.0 is we've integrated the uh, Oasis control panel into this. So now, not only is this a great or fantastic you know, mixer, recorder, receiver, transmitter mm -hmm. for a sound bag, but it's also now great for a sound cart as well. I mean, now that we've upgraded it to 16 tracks, which is another version 2.0 thing, it came out as a 12 track recorder. Right. Okay. So we've upgraded it to 16 tracks so that, you know, you have more than enough tracks to do 99 point something percent of all the cart work you'd want to do. And if you look at what is really unique about this, it has the eight internal receivers if you buy two MRX414 modules. Right. So, you know, we did all that so that we can have something that is ultra light, ultra low power, ultra small. If you're working on a sound cart and then they say, you know what, okay, we have to go to a sound bag, you don't have to have a separate set of wireless. Right. All you do is basically unplug like two connectors and drop it in the sound bag, plug in the power and go. So instead of having effectively two sets of gear and having to set up two sets of gear, frequencies and what have you, it is a real savings for sound mixers who do both cart work and bag work. Well, and I think the trend for sound carts in general is smaller. And this this could be very, this could really could be hosted on a very small sound cart with a control well, surface. Absolutely. And, you know, of course, we're working on, you know, new accessories all the time mm -hmm. for this. And, you know, we're not, can't go into specifics, but, you know, when it comes to what we've done with Nova and what we've done in version 2.0, you know, I mean, we've done other smaller uh, incremental things. We've put in, uh, you know, better directory structure, monitoring of the mirror card so that people can look through it and see what they have on there. And there, there have been other, other things we've done with the, uh, the meters and what have you. Because we always like to put up as much information as we can. Like if you go back to the overhead view, mm -hmm. you're going to see... Uh, the receiver meters in green on the right side. And those meters are telling me that I've got full signal on the receivers. And uh, basically that, you know, that that's an ISO track of a receiver. Uh, I believe very shortly uh, that will start to flash, not shortly in this demo, but uh, when we put the software in, those are going to start to flash when batteries go low on the transmitters because we want to keep you in the home screen and show you everything you need to see. So there's a lot going on on these meters. I mean, you've got trim level icons, you've got the auto mixer showing me what's going on here. And you can see on track six, there is a receiver uh, that is active, but not receiving anything because we only have three transmitters in the room here. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, another thing we have put in version 2.0 is better compatibility with some compact flashcards that were causing problems. Hmm. So the compatibility of this with compact flashcards is basically without any issues at all. You just go to the store, you buy a compact flashcard, you put it in and you go. And really that's due, that's due to the fact that, you know, we do have our own MARF operating system and it easily deals with cards that are slow or having issues. Very fault tolerant extremely fault tolerant. You can basically come back after the fact if you had a power loss and, you know, as MARF has always done, recover audio up to the moment of that power loss. And you're not doing that with any internal batteries. You just, you could just pull power and you're good to go. So there's never any power issues with this. And besides, we don't want any batteries in it anyway, because, you know, if you have a battery issue or some kind of lockup right. thing you want to be able to shut your machine down very quickly yeah and i will say we have never had a reported lockup with nova i mean the operating system on this has just been incredibly robust and we're really proud that we designed the hardware and software to the point where it has just been an incredibly reliable device well done um 
Now we're going to make available for people to listen to the isolated tracks, which are untouched by the auto mixer. Right. Um, we're going to make available uh, the mix track. Yes. Um, so people will be able to download this and, and compare on their own. They can certainly do that. Good. Good. Yeah. Excellent. So, you know, and when it comes to the auto mixer, you know, we didn't do anything here special. I just basically came in, put it down. But, you know, we do have tweaks in there. And, uh, you know, we're certainly able to uh, turn off the noise reduction. And what I'd like to probably do is go in here and go to the auto mixer. And just for a few moments, I'll, I'll get rid of the noise reduction completely so that people can now hear the auto mixer. Uh, my, the sound mixer in the room says the background noise should be up a bit. Yeah. So, you know, I've done, now that I've done that, I'll keep quiet for a second. And we can talk over each other if you would like to say a sure, few words. Sure, so we can we can uh, we can hear and, yeah, yeah what's going on. So me. That's yeah. Fun. Yeah. yeah, so the auto mixer, the noise reduction is out, and just to maybe just dial it back in three dB, uh, just to give it a little bit more of a. What's you know, a nominal level uh, for for the noise reduction? You know, it's user taste, really. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I had it running at minus six dB throughout. The majority of this presentation, so um, you know you can hear what that does, and uh, you know I think it, it's it's really effective. There's no doubt. And please keep in mind that all of the noise reduction, there's 18 noise redu reducers on. There's one on every channel, uh -huh. so it's all independent. You know, so that really adds to the benefit of. You know, it's not the same thing as uh, something like the more expensive separate hardware. Noise reducer boxes, whose name I'm drawing a blank. C Cedar, the DNS the Cedar, which is a wonderful, sure. wonderful product. Yeah, it's not that, right? Okay, but what it is is something that because it can work on every channel independently, has its own, you know, very important difference to that box. Yeah, because you're not going to walk around with 18 channels of Cedar. You're going to have a sound bag that weighs 60 pounds. Right. That you can't power. <laughs> uh, no, I uh, agree. Yeah, again, Absolutely. wonderful product. Yes. I'm not putting it down at all. I really love how that thing works. Yeah. Will these features migrate to the Diva 24 and the Nomad? You know, uh, yeah, I have to say that they really can't make it into the Nomad. The Nomad processor runs much slower. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a different bus structure. It's just, you know, it's something we designed like eight, nine years ago. Sure. Yeah. And it just doesn't have the DSP capability that this has. So it won't be in there. Uh, Diva 24, we're going to put out an update for Diva 24. And I can't talk about the specific features, mm -hmm. but you know, we realize that we have an obligation to our Diva 24 customers to make sure they have the best mixer recorder on the planet. And I think the Diva 24 does a lot of wonderful things. But also, you know, I think everyone has to keep in mind that that's a product that we started designing approximately four or five years ago. Mm -hmm. But we are continuing to do that. And, you know, we want happy customers and we want people to get on set and amaze their clients with what they can do. And uh, Zaxcom customers do that every day, um, especially with this product, because what we've heard online is people say, you know, my clients are like, where's your sound bag? Where's all your gear? You didn't bring any wireless? And they have to explain, no, no, this is a new thing. It's all in there. And I can do more than I used to do with the 20 or 30 pound sound bag with this five pound sound bag. So it's pretty amazing stuff. It's, it is amazing. Um, all right. I think with that, we'll, we'll leave it here. Thank you for watching. Uh, thanks, Joe, for being our, our off-camera voice. Mm -hmm. um, as always, visit the video archives at gothamsound.tv. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter for the latest news. Send your ideas questions, comments into info at gothamsound.com. Um, and especially I'm interested in your comments uh, about what you think of the files. Um, let us know. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Peter.